There are a number of artifacts found at varying parts of the world, which, due to the immense age of the strata they were discovered within, fly in the face of current paradigms in regards to the chronology of man. Iron pots, zinc vases, even imprints of ancient chariot wheels, found in numerous coal seams, and found by people in positions of responsibility, whom often testify not only in regards to their legitimacy, but are often accompanied by the lump of coal in which they were found, still possessing the intriguing imprint upon their surface, undeniably supporting the testimonies of these individuals, all but proving authenticity beyond doubt. Like that of the iron pot and its accompanying coal block, which was its tomb, carbon dating has indicated that the pot is an astonishing 300 million years old. However, as time goes on and coal mining, along with many other mining activities, becomes more rapid and advanced in nature, it is simply a matter of time before even more mysterious and unexplainable artifacts are also found. Unfortunately, due to the controversial nature of these artifacts, it is very likely that a number of them have either been shrugged off or actively destroyed before ever achieving widespread acclaim. However, fortunately, the next artifact of interest, just like that of the many others we have previously covered, can not only be seen as yet another smoking gun, indicating that there has been a number of advanced phases within human civilization, but yet again, this timeline could, in all possibility, date back an astonishing 300 million years. Although modern society has been taught that we are at the height of human accomplishments, many of these techniques we currently claim as our own accomplishments could have been achieved an unimaginably long time ago, far back within Earth's history. Dated to the same age as that of a number of other artifacts, which we have covered in the past, a group of brass doorknobs were once abandoned, eventually finding their way into a coal seam which has been dated as 300 million year old geology. Found still encased within this ancient strata, these astonishing artifacts are undeniably of an incredible age. Unfortunately, and rather predictably, not much has been done in regard to mainstream investigation into said artifacts and their current location, if indeed still in existence, is unclear. Yet fortunately, before their disappearance, photographic evidence was taken, subsequently allowing us to add it to the volume of research and artifacts which not only support our posit of lost civilization, but place human activities an impressive 300 million years back into Earth's history. Who made these brass doorknobs? Could we really be a civilization hundreds of millions of years old? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. In 1994, Klaus Schmidt of the German Archaeological Institute began excavations at a Neolithic site located within modern-day southern Turkey. Noted for its immense size and its undeniably incredible antiquity, Gobekli Tepe is an ancient structure made up of at least 200 T-shaped stone pillars, some of which measuring an impressive 6 meters in height and weighing a respectable 22 tons in weight. However, although it has been admitted as one of the oldest sites on Earth, undeniably contradicting modern-day paradigms in regards to the claimed dates of modern ancestral migration routes, the pillars are also covered with mysterious symbology, some of which has since been identified in an ancient group who not only share these same symbols within their culture, even to this day, but have since been hypothesized by a number of individual researchers as the possible culprits for the construction of the site itself, dating back to what we feel is a now lost antiquity. Gobekli Tepe has been academically dated as being at least 12,000 years old, yet any logical explanation as to who or indeed how the site was constructed remains conveniently elusive. Yet regardless of the unanswered questions that many people are still left with, even after academia's explanation, intrigue has seemingly increased since its exception into known site of Earth's antiquities. Modern studies have discovered compelling links between the symbolism of the site and that of the symbolism still used within Aboriginal groups of Australia. 
famous for their ancient ancestry and their claims of a lost time before history books began, which they now call dream time, it seems that further to these curious beliefs, they also share an ancient language of symbols with the site, whose meanings has unfortunately been lost to the chasm of time. Yet regardless of their lost meaning, the similarities between this mysterious language and that of the symbology carved upon what is claimed as the oldest site on earth is undeniable. This realization has enabled a number of individual researchers to conclude that there was once a now lost civilization who they now believe and claim was once made up of aboriginals, who they also claim seemingly survived upon the continent of Australia but were mysteriously wiped out upon the many other continents of the earth. Furthermore, it seems that there are a number of areas upon the site that mainstream sources would prefer stay covered up. The Turkish government recently visited the site and committed an act of criminal vandalism, filling a number of intriguing voids at the site with cement. The question is, what were they so desperate to conceal? Could there possibly be compounding evidence at the site, supporting the new and current hypothesis of the site once having aboriginal origins? It's undoubtedly a site which deserves more protection, one which we find highly compelling. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Since man landed on the moon, countless conspiracy theories have surfaced all over the web. Some so virulent, they spread like a virus, seeping into many areas of the media. Some of these theories, predictably, hold more water than others. Some claim we never went to the moon, this regardless of the proof that has continued to surface over the years. NASA claims to have lost the telemetry from the moon landings also. The motive behind this claim is unclear, yet no matter how unlikely, they continue to claim that it has been missing for decades. Conspiracy theorists often overlook the astonishing contributions which NASA has also made to modern society. Yet some theories actually claim a literal polar opposite of moon landing conspiracies. These not only agree that we did indeed land, walk, and even drive on the moon, but claim we have been back in secret and to explore a rather astonishing thing. According to numerous sources, the most compelling of said claims began on YouTube, with the release of some extraordinary CGI footage of a claimed moon landing and the exploration of a simply gigantic alien spacecraft. Due to the moon being so difficult to reach, and the fact that anything which either crashed, landed, or was possibly even abandoned on the moon, even billions of years ago, would have been preserved in an incredible condition. In April 2007, Videos began appearing on YouTube under the username RetireDafB, telling the extraordinary story of a supposed Apollo 20, a secret lunar mission that had discovered the existence of intelligent alien life on the moon. Then, on May 23, 2007, Italian UFOologist Luca Scantaburlo managed to secure an interview with an individual who claimed to be the creator of the channel a man by the name of William Rutledge, who later claimed to be, in fact, himself, a retired secret American astronaut, who at the time was living in Rwanda. Rutledge claimed to be the commander of the Apollo 20 crew, and to be the owner of the retired DAFB account. However, the interviewer never met Rutledge in person, as the interview was conducted over Yahoo Messenger. During the interview, however, Rutledge claimed that Apollo 20 was a top-secret mission, launched in mid-August 1976 from Vandenberg Air Force Base near Santa Barbara, California. He also claimed that it was conducted jointly by the United States and the former Soviet Union. He also alleged that other missions were made by American astronaut Leona Snyder, a now-established fictitious persona, and former Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov the first human to perform a spacewalk. The purported landing site of the mission was near Gaillot Crater, a feature near the much larger Del Porte Crater. Rutledge said the videos show that he and Leonov discovered the remains of an ancient lunar civilization. He also said they brought back artifacts to Earth for study, including a hibernating female humanoid. It is a story which we found highly compelling. Many of the sites which we so often cover 
are not only attributed to what we believe, is in reality a far more recent well-studied yet less controversial ancestor, one placed within permitted timelines. Indeed, many of these sites would have been incredible relics so far back within history, periods of development and difficulties, many ancient sites so well-built, thus resistant to weathering, that what we claim as merely re-inhabited locations often become the cradle of more recent academically permitted civilizational flourishment. It would also make sense on a strategic level to have claimed such miraculous technological advancements that these past constructions still displayed as their own handiwork, adopting, or rather hijacking said sites, making academia's job an easy one. For not only are these sites attributed to civilizations who would have been developing said technologies in their mere infancy, but these adopters of past high technology themselves claim to be the creators of said sites, this regardless of the incredible perfection present and the mastery of said sites on display, no matter how unlikely this level of efficient execution would have been, no matter how preposterous to assume they suddenly arose. Alas, this is exactly what one is expected to believe. The Royal Mausoleum of Mauritania, for example, located on the road between Churchill and Algiers, in Tempaza province, Algeria, is an impressive ancient structure, which we have discovered is actually hiding some telltale characteristics indicative of lost technology, and thus lost civilization. Claimed as that of a funerary tomb, like so many other sites we cover, dismissed of its controversial features and academically concluded as the burial site of the Berber king Juba II and Queen Cleopatra Selene II, both past sovereigns of Numidia and Mauritania, allegedly buried at the site. However, predictably, no human remains have ever been found at the site, and this is claimed to be due to tomb raiding. As mentioned here, there are particular features of the site not only hidden in plain sight, but we posit were probably noticed and deliberately ignored during mainstream explorations. False doors indicative of a lost civilization. Furthermore, note the size of the stones in which these and other frescoes have been carved into. Standing tens of feet high, several feet in length, and over a foot thick, these stones were far beyond the weight of what those who are academically claimed as the builders were capable of lifting. Clearly showing signs of an incredibly long life, with several of the build's old stone layers now all but eroded to dust. Not only was the structure built to last, but we feel has in all possibility outlived a past now lost civilization. Who really built the Royal Mausoleum of Mauritania? How did they lift and place such gigantic stones? Why have these features seemingly been overlooked? Questions which desperately need answers. It is a sight which we find highly compelling.